Okay, thank you, Lindsay, and uh, thanks for all the introductions from everyone. So the question I ask all my classes, can you see my screen? It's working. Okay, good. And you can hear me fine. All right. Um, so good morning, and thank you to the Queen's Center for Teaching and Learning for organizing this virtual showcase and to all of you for attending. My presentation today, Teaching Intro Archaeology by Storybooks and Videos, is um, about the pandemic necessitated alterations to one of my regular courses. Introduction to Archaeology 2, Methods and Analysis, is a first year single semester course whose purpose is to provide an introduction to modern archaeological field techniques and methods of analysis. Over 12 weeks, students are introduced to modern attitudes and ethics regarding the material remains of past cultures, how archeological projects are designed, survey and excavation techniques on land and water, ways of analyzing, dating and conserving sites, artifacts, plant remains, animal remains and human remains, and the link between past remains and modern concepts of heritage and identity. Obviously, this introductory course covers a great deal of material. And so in March 2020, when the university abruptly closed and we were forced to cut a week's worth of material and rethink the final two weeks, I still had many important topics to cover with the students. In March 2020, video lectures were not yet an option. So I had to come up with a way to teach the most important aspects of the remaining material with the resources available. I could have just asked them to finish the textbook on their own, but that did not seem like a good pedagogical solution. So following the proverb that necessity is the mother of invention, I invented my own solution. That solution was inspired by children's storybooks, especially those in the eyewitness series that educate readers with a combination of text and images to promote intellectual engagement. Obviously, I couldn't create books in the short time available, but I could create illustrated PDFs based on the remaining lectures. Luckily, I had already taught this course many times, so I had at my disposal images and scripts from my past lectures. Here are some examples of the pages from the March 2020 storybooks in the section on archaeological conservation. Now this technique served its purpose in covering the most important aspects of the remaining material, and the students performed well in the final exam, which supported the new format's potential. The downside was a lack of interaction between myself and the students, and my inability to convey my enthusiasm about the course material, which in course evaluations, students regularly cited as one of the aspects of the course they most appreciated. So when I was faced with teaching this whole course remotely in fall 2020, I knew I wanted to build on a full, I knew, sorry, I knew I wanted to build a fully remote version of the course around the storybook format that I had already experimented with. I also wanted to utilize the recommendations from CTL and Arts and Science Online about remote teaching and especially the chunking method. I therefore reconceptualized the whole course design and delivery in terms of topic focused PDFs in this new storybook format and decided to post them twice a week so as to encourage students to fully engage with one topic before moving on to the next. Here's some examples of pages from a topic discussing the roles of excavation team members. This section, like many of my case studies, featured images of Queen's students and faculty engaging with archaeological materials so that the first year course members could more easily imagine themselves interacting in an archaeological project. This strategy to imagine themselves interacting with cultural remains was a strategy for building engagement that was reinforced by questions students were asked to consider before proceeding through the prepared material. So for example, the text in the bottom right page says, could you imagine yourself in one of these positions? Keep that image in mind in the next section as we start excavating. Other engagement strategies included short weekly assignments to assess learning of each week's topics, a beginning of the week email outlining that week's course plan, 
and a weekly Zoom office hour where students could chat with me and the TAs about the course or about archaeology in general. In addition, one new component of the course the students and I found particularly fun and engaging involved short two to five minute introductory videos that I filmed for each topic in locations all over Kingston and the surrounding countryside. Here's some screenshots from videos of me discussing survey, excavation, archeological assessment, and heritage management in parks, fields, and in front of construction sites. You can also see some of the archeological props that I featured and two of my archeologically themed t-shirts, which became very popular with the students in their own right. Some of the videos were shot in front of displays or working with artifacts at home, in my office, or in the classics hallway. And I just want to point out that was before masks were mandatory there. I'm pleased to say that these videos inspired one of my graduate student TAs to film her own introductory video about, exper about an experimental archaeology project she was engaged in to recreate Roman socks. So that's her in the bottom. And as you all know, it's so very nice as an educator to see a student following in your footsteps, or in this case, sock steps. Ha. So interesting locations and props help to make the videos more interesting. So did humor. Hence, I made sure to add some fun, like showing myself excavating Playmobil Roman figures in a back garden. And I also shared the blooper with the class of when my cat lay on top of all of my carefully arranged props. I really enjoyed the results of all this innovation in a course that I've taught in the classroom more than a dozen times before. These innovations, as I said at the beginning, were the offspring of necessity. They began as a solution for delivering the course material and engaging students virtually in the special circumstances of an unprecedented pandemic and concurrent educational crisis. But the success I found with these new methods of delivery now makes me want to continue with them in my future teaching. The course metrics support the success of these new modes of delivery. This image shows the grade distribution for the last time I taught this course completely on campus in 2019 and from my fully virtual version in fall 2020. Note how the grade distribution for the virtual course compared to the online campus, uh, to the on-campus uh, course shows the distribution pulled towards the upper end. Note also how the proportion of students achieving an A plus or A grade increased in the virtual course. And this was uh, due to learning. This wasn't due to any kind of cheating or anything. This was definitely, they were learning the material. The other available metric, the QSET survey, also confirmed that students have felt very engaged by the virtual course and that the new methods of course delivery and evaluation. And so here's just a few examples, uh, just so you can get the sense. Uh, so one student said, this was my most engaging course this semester. I appreciated the weekly videos because it showed effort and passion of teaching. The weekly assignments were great for my learning, and I thoroughly enjoyed the course material. Another said, I immensely enjoyed my time in this class. The workload was perfect. The material was presented in a fun and engaging way. And I always enjoyed how the office hours would expand on what I had learned or offered an insight into the course pass. And one more, just because this, this one's kind of funny, but um, so the most engaging organized professor I've had during this hellscape of online learning, I thought you'd appreciate that, course material was spread out throughout the week, and I especially looked forward to the introduction videos each week. Now, given the demonstrated success of this format in engaging students and promoting greater educational success, as shown by the grade distribution, I hope to continue with this newly developed format to educate and inspire future students with an interest in archaeology and the material remains of past cultures. Based on Queen's newly released plan to make in-person teaching the priority for 2021-2022, that may not be possible now. So to innovate on a famous innovation quote, I am left to dream of things that once were and wonder why not. Finally. I just want to give thanks to my two videographers, John Pierce and Terry Smith, 
my graduate student TA slash sock maker, Emily Croft, and to CTL and Arts and Science Online for all the helpful guidance they posted on virtual delivery. And thanks very much to you for listening. <laughs>